What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to resize button text when we resize our window with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to resize the button text when we resize the button, when we resize the window. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, I showed you how to resize buttons dynamically whenever we resize the window, right? But in that video, the button text itself didn't change. So it just said button one in very little text. And as we move the button around, it continued to be little text. And you may want it to be bigger text when you get bigger and smaller text when you get smaller. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. Now, there's not a great way to do this. So I just kind of hacked together a hacky way to do it. And it kind of works and it has a little bit of a, uh, it kind of works and it kind of doesn't, we'll talk about it. But just for something quick and easy, this will do the trick. So I've got a file called button underscore text.py. I've got our basic Kinter starter code plus uh, some stuff that we did in the last video. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal. Now, what I did is I took away most of the excess stuff from the last video, and you know we had two buttons. Now I've just got one button in one row and one column, and so we have our column config, we have our row config, and we have and we've got our one button. So if we save this and run it, button underscore text, we go Python button underscore text dot pi. You see, we've got this button. It says button one in very little text, right? It's the default text size. And if you change the size of the button, it doesn't actually do anything. So what we can do here, and like I said, there's probably different ways to do this. I just kind of thought about it for a few minutes and how would I do this? And I thought about binding the entire app. So if we bind the app and run a function whenever we change the app, then we can in that function change our text size to whatever we want. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go uh, bind the app, right? So we want to go root.bind. And we've done binding lots of times in the past. If you haven't seen those videos, check the playlist in the comment section below. And what I want to bind is, you know, usually we have like left mouse button or the up arrow key or, you know, uh, the space bar, something like this. This time we want to we want to bind configure. So whenever we configure our app, one of the things that we can configure is its size. So when that size changes, that configure will change. And when that configure changes, we can then run a function. So what function do we want to run? Let's run the resize function. Now we don't have a resize function just yet, but we can make one. So let's go define resize. And then let's just pass for now. Now, normally when you bind something and you pass it into a function, you need an E because the binding is an event, right? You're, you're binding an event. And so you have to pass that event into this thing, but I'm going to leave this off for now. So let's save this and run it. And when we do, we get this. Now, anytime I try and change this, you can see I get an error, right? And that's because, just like I said, we didn't pass in that E. So the reason why I left this off is because I really want to emphasize this. If we pass in the E, it will work. But what exactly is that E, right? So let's print it out and see. So let's print out that E. So if we save this and run it, and bring this back over here. And now when we resize this, it's going to print out our E. And so when we close this and look, that E is a configure. That's the configure thing that we passed in the binding, right? Um, right here, right? So we're seeing that and it's passing an event. It's passing an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, a width and a height. So every time we change the size of the, or every time we change the app by dragging it around, you can see we're getting a different width and height and also X and Y coordinates for that matter. So we can say, hey, whenever the width is a certain thing, let's make the text a certain thing. Whenever the height is a certain thing, let's make the text size a certain thing, right? And we can do that. And we can do that a couple of different ways, sort of a, a good way and a bad way, I guess. So let's do, let's do the good way first, I guess. So let's get rid of this print thing. Now up here in our resize function, let's create a variable, I'm gonna call it size. And this is going to be our text size eventually, right? So to access any of these things like the height, the width, the x and the y, we can just reference e dot 
whatever. So if we want the width, we can reference E dot width, right? If we want the height, we can reference E dot height, right? So I'm going to stick with width. And now this will pass whatever that number is into that variable. So here we have 353, 356. You can see when it starts out, the app is, let me scroll all the way up, the app is 500. Why? Well, because up here at the top, that's what we set our app to be. The size is 500. So, right, we know it starts at 500. So we can say e dot width. Now, if we start at 500, that's pretty big, right? We don't want text of a size 500. That would just be gigantic and unreadable, right? So instead, let's take whatever this is and divide it by like 10, right? Divide it by anything you want. But if it starts out at 500, that means the size will now be 50. If we shrink it down to 300, the size will be 30. If we shrink it down to 200, the size will be 20, right? And those are more like text sizes, right? Remember when in the past, whenever I changed the font, I always changed it to Helvetica and like 18. Well, that would be 180 with 18 font. That's roughly right, right? So now we can just update our button size. So our button is called button one. So we can just, uh, well, let me comment this. Uh, grab the app width and divide by 10, right? Now let's change our button text size. So our button is button one. And we can just dot config this in the way we always config things. And usually we change the text to something when we config, but now we want to change the font, right? And so, you know, I always put the font as Helvetica. So let's do that. And then I would put the font as like 18. Well, instead of putting 18, now I'm just going to put size, whatever this variable is, right? So really that's all we have to do. If we save this and run it, you can see, uh-oh. Something's gone wrong. Let's see, what do we do? Oh, okay, so we need this to be an integer, right? So, pull up our code here. Size, this in here needs to be an integer, right? So let's just wrap this in an integer function, right? And now that will convert that to an integer and we're good to go. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and let's clear the screen here and run this guy again. And boom, we get right off the bat, big text. So the the app is width of 500 now. So that means this font is te uh, text size 50, right? So if we grab this and change it, you can see it gets smaller based on whatever. And we can go all the way out and it gets all the way big. And that's cool. So let me run this again and show you the one sort of problem with this. Now, if we just grab the height, Remember, we're working on width here. So if we change the height, nothing is really changing here. So there's probably a bunch of different ways you can do this, but I want to show you now a second way to do this that sort of is a little even more hacky than the first way. So let's pull this back up and uh, let's uh, mess with height here, right? So let's do an if statement. Let's say if e dot height is let's say less than or equal to say 300, right? So if the height is 300 and above, we're not gonna do anything. But if, it's, if it hits 300 and below, we wanna do something. So what do we wanna do? Well, let's just configure this thing manually, right? Now we could just pick a size if we want, you know, or we could pass in this int size, that might work. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see. So we're at 500 now. If I grab this, well, see, that's the problem though, because our size is still 500 width. So this won't change, right? So we can't do that. But what we can do is just, like I said, explicitly create a number here. So instead of passing in size, we could just pass 30. Or we could go, uh, we could create a, say a height size, underscore size, and we could just do the same thing we did here, right? Except for instead of width here, we can do height, that would work. So then we could pass height size in here. But again, we need to wrap this in an integer function so that it's an integer. Okay, so let's try that. Oh, whoops, e dot height. 
Ah, <laughs> we need an equal to sign there. Okay, so let's save this and run it. And we get this, and now if we start to go up, and we hit 300, boom, it switches down. So that works, right? If we do it this way, it still works like that, right? So let's run this again. And if we go like this, that still works. If we go like this, that still works. If we go like this, that still works. If we go like this, there's an upper limit to this. So, you know, you could play around with this, I guess. And that pretty much works. We could also, uh, let's comment all of this out. We could be very explicit, right? So we can say if e dot height is less than or equal to 300, then let me just copy this. Let's just make this then say 30. And then we can also do an elif statement, right? Elif e dot height is less than say 200. And then we can make this 20. And I think we're missing out parentheses here and here. Okay, so now that works, right? And then, you know, we could do this again. And say for 100. Now, we probably need to put some ranges in here. So let's put from 300 and E dot height is say less than 200. And here we want to go from say 200 and E dot height is let's say greater than 100. So we got ranges here from, you know, from 200 to 100. And finally from 100 or less, that's fine. We could leave that. So now if we save this and run it, we kind of get the same, oops, invalid syntax. Where'd we go? Line 27. Ah, we've got some, there we go. Okay, so now save this and run it. <laughs> we can see it sort of explicitly, boom, 30, 20. Oh, you know what I did? I forgot to change. I'm having a hard time here this morning. So this will be 30, this will be 20, and this will be 10. There we go. Now, right, we can, Boom, 30, 20, 10, right? So, okay, that's a little bit more of a hacky way to do it, but if you wanna be just completely explicit, you could do it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out because we don't really want that. And I'm gonna comment this back in because this pretty much does the trick. Save this again, run it one more time just for fun. And we have button text that resizes, click our button, resizes that way, that way, resizes, boom, that way, that way, and uh, pretty cool. So think about both of these methods, play around with them, maybe you can do something a little bit better. You know, like I said, this is a really kind of hacky way to do it, but for the most part it works, and uh, Pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you like, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.